Welcome back, comrade. Today is going to be another video tutorial, yeah? We're going to create a new ActionScript 3.0 document, also known as a Flash document, if you remember from a while ago I said that. But anyway, this video is going to be about text fields and the text tool. So I'm just going to call this Text Fields Video. Save. And now, to begin, our text tool is on the top left. The big T stands for text. So just go ahead and click on that really quick. And you notice on the right side, we have all these properties for writing text. Before I move on, let's, let's the standard procedure here. We want a layer for art and we want a layer for actions. So I'm gonna lock my actions layer, go back to art, go back to my text tool. And now we have text. So the first thing I want to explain is underneath text tool, there's something called classic text and TLF text. You don't ever need to change this. It should always say classic text. Uh, but the part that you do need to worry about is this part right here, which is the type of text. So we have static text, dynamic text, and input text. For now, all we've really used is static text. And static text is text that you write once or you know twice on your stage. So I'm gonna say, this is the most static text in the world. Not really. <laughs> so I've written text, right? And if I click on it with my selection tool, you can see the text type is static. And static means it's not going to change. So you write it, um, you write it once on your stage or twice, or if, you know if you forget to, uh, you know, add a word, delete a word. You can still do that, but when you run your program, you're not going to be able to change that text. It's always going to be whatever it was that you typed originally. So, moving on, I'm going to go ahead and create another type of text, which is called dynamic text. For this purpose, make sure your font is set to underscore sans at the very, very top here in the in the uh, family. And I'm going to change this to dynamic text. I'm going to write out this is dynamic text, and I'm going to resize this just a little bit so that it looks nice. So now I have static text and dynamic text, and if I run. Oh, well, what do you know? They look exactly the same. Couldn't tell the difference, right? Well, let's give these instance names. Notice how static text, you can't give it an instance name. That's because you're never going to change it. If you click on the dynamic text, you can see now instance name pops up in the top right. So let's give dynamic text a name. I'll just say TXT, just basically short for text field. And then I'm going to give it a name just dynamic. So make sure you spell it exactly how I did here. And now, if I go into, let's confirm, it does say text dynamic. If I go into my actions layer, I'm just going to have it trace out um, txt dynamic, because that's what we named it. And I'm just going to have it trace out whatever is in our text field, right? So if I go ahead and do it just like this, I just wrote the instance name we gave it, and I run this it's not going to do exactly what you think it would. It says object text field. Well, how do we actually get the text inside of it? The every text field has a property called text. Go figure. So you put a dot and all lowercase the word text and you run and now it's going to pull back whatever was in my text box, which is this is dynamic text just like on my stage here and it's going to write it to the output. So, just like we can read uh, what's inside of our text box, we can actually give it a value. So what I can do is I can say when we start, I'm going to say txt dynamic dot text, um, set it equal to um, dynamic text can be changed at runtime, and runtime is just after you've run your code. So I say set text property to something new. I'm just gonna give it a comment. And while I'm doing comments, let's let's label this text fields video. And I'm going to run this now. 
And as you can see, it says dynamic text can be changed. But remember though, ha, that's not what it was originally. It's because we changed it with code. The very last type of text, let's go into our text tool, is called input text. And input text is a text box the user will actually be able to type into. So make sure you're on your art layer. Go to the text tool. Oops, let me unselect this stuff. Go to text tool. Make sure your type is set to input text. And if we type now, say, user should be able to oops, able to type here and if I did this correctly let's resize this oh come on there we go and let's actually um, center all this in the middle so there we go so this is an input text you can see in the top right let's go ahead and run it see what it does so we have our static text our dynamic text and our input text and if you notice when I hover over the input text there's a little um, the icon for typing pops up and I can highlight this I can delete it I can type the best text in the world And you notice how it drops down to the next line after I um, go beyond how big or how wide I made my text box. So you notice here at the bottom, this is how wide I made it. When I get past that, it jumps to the new line. What if I keep typing? Yay. Oh no. What happened to the rest of my text? Well, it pushed it up and it's still there, but you can't see it all. So I'm going to show you how to fix that. I'm going to close that out, make sure we save, and I'm going to give our input text a, um, an instance name of txt, just sh short for text field, so we know it's a text field later, and I'm going to say input. And now, what we can do is let's go ahead and open up, let's see, on the L drive, let me get this in, on the L drive, under programming class, Summon up the AS3 application programming interface or the API. I'm going to go over here. Now this is open under classes. Guess, guess what we're going to search for? Text field. And now we find text field. And here we go. The property that I'm going to show you is called auto size. So if we scroll down under properties, there's a property called auto size and it controls the automatic sizing and alignment of text fields and what auto sizing does is that it allows your text box to grow or change size when it's being changed dynamically or by user input so if I click on auto size it tells me all the information I need to know about it uh, I've already read this so I'm just gonna explain something really quick but basically you can set this value to be equal to text field auto size none left right or center and it tells you what they all do here by default it's set to none because it's not auto sizing um, because I'm aligning to the left I'm going to use text field auto size dot left so going back here we have our text input uh, really quick, just make sure that your behavior is multi-line when you have this selected. So underneath here, make sure it says multi-line and nothing else. Um, or single line, I guess, would work too. But basically, we're going to click on this, right? It's called TXT input. We go into our code, and I'm going to say TXT input dot auto size, just like in our API. And I'm going to set it equal to text field auto size dot left. And what that's going to do is it's basically going to stretch our text um, to, towards the right, like it was uh, like it was left justified. Actually, it's, I have it set to center, so I'm going to set it to the left. So that way, it all makes sense. So format is to the left. We've aligned to the left, and now what's going to happen is that as I type, 
this text box's width is going to be further, further stretched out to the right. And if I go back into our actions window, text input, so txt input dot auto size equals text field auto size dot left. This will basically um, allow text field to be resized automatically. And now I'm going to run. And I made an error of auto size. Oops, what did I do? I think auto size has to be capitalized. Yes, the S needs to be capitalized in S <laughs> in auto size, not in S. So that's why I messed up. This is what I'm telling me. Undefined property auto size. Well, I spelled it wrong. My capitalization was wrong. So now if I fix that, it turns blue like it should. And now I'm going to run my program. And now we have exactly the same thing. Now I'm going to add on the best text in the world. And now, as you can see, the text box is auto sizing. It's allowing me to have um, more lines than is actually fit down here. Um, remember, I did say it would stretch to the right. The reason why it's behaving like this is because I have it set to multi-line. So when I have it set to multi-line, it's just going to create new lines. If I have it set to single line, what it's going to do is, is now there's only one line. It, it, it won't drop down at all. It's just going to go to the right. The best text in the world. See, and it's you can't even see that because it's off the screen. But I promise you it's there. So you're going to have to play around with behaviors. Um, there's multi-line, multi-line no wrap, which multi-line no wrap means uh, there's no word wrap. So multi-line no wrap, I believe in this situation, will work the same as a single line. Um, you can put multiple lines, but it won't do it for you. So no word wrap. The last one is password, which it takes whatever you type into it and it um, replaces it with asterisks. So I'm not typing asterisks. I'm typing something really bad and you can't see it. So I'm not going to tell you what I typed there. Uh, I, I, yeah, I know. Shh. You, you're never going to know. It's just a secret. That's why it was a password. So I'm going to set this to multi or single line, excuse me. And I'm going to explain the rest of these properties. So we've gone over static text, which doesn't change, uh, dynamic text, which can be changed by code, and input text, which allows the user to uh, modify it. And if you notice uh, a couple things, well, I'll go over, uh, let me just start with me. So under character, okay, blah, 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 blah. Let's top down. So we have instance names, the text engine, which you don't have to worry about this, just leave it as classic text, and the three types, text types, which are static, dynamic, and input. Um, we have our position and size. So this is X and Y, where it's located on the stage. W and H stand for width and height, so it's how tall, how wide it is. And moving on, we have character. So family is the is essentially the font that you have. If you use one of these top three fonts, so sans serif or typewriter, you don't have to worry about this. So if you don't remember this or you don't want to don't want to deal with it, these are your three go-to fonts. But let's say I gave my dynamic text the font um, ABC Bulletin because it's beautiful and reminds me of kindergarten. And we all want to be children, don't we? Right? Maybe? No? Okay, maybe I'm just weird. Um, so this is what we have. I've set it to a family or a font that is not one of these three up here. Anytime you use any kind of text that is not one of these top three here, once you have it selected, you need to go under style and you need to embed your font. So you need to embed it as, so you, what you do is you just click embed right here. And now you see it's brought up whatever text I had, which was ABC bulletin. You can give it a name, any name you want. And you have a bunch of options here for what characters you're gonna be using. So if you think you're only gonna be using uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers, punctuation. You can just check those boxes. If you don't want to um, think about it, you can just click all. Once you click all and click okay. So now if you click embed again, 
you can see that my font from before is already there. Let me change this to something else just so you can see that it's there. So you see we have ABC Bulletin, which is regular font one, and now ABC Clocks, which is gibberish. So I'm gonna cancel that. But if you wanna use any kind of specific font that's not one of these top three, you have to embed it. So moving on, we have size, which is uh, the uh, how big our text is. So if I'd make this to 12, it gets really small. If I bumped it up to like 60, it's really big. So I'm gonna leave this at 18. Um, letter spacing is how far apart your letters are. So the larger this number is, you can see it's making my numbers further spaced. Zero is just normal, how it should be. And I believe this will even go to negative. It will a little bit. And I mean, you can just play around with that. You don't really need to use it. Color is color. You know how to do color. Don't worry about anti-alias. The next thing, the next two options here, we have selectable and show border around text. And I'm gonna check these two. And now if I run, what's gonna happen is there's now a border around my text box. And now when I, um, when I select my, my text here, well, let me put it this way. Now I can actually select this dynamic text. Without selectable checked, I cannot select I can't change this with my keyboard with input. I can't delete or anything because it's not input text. It's dynamic text, but I can at least select um, this text so I could copy and paste it somewhere. So if I take off selectable and now I run, dynamic text is no longer selectable. And let me get rid of that. Change this up. And if you look down here, with the input text. You can see selectable by default is checked. Uh, underneath paragraph, if you noticed what I did before, there's format, which is a line left, which you know aligns left, center is center, line is right, and justify sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. I wouldn't worry about justify. So I'm gonna leave this at a line center. Uh, spacing, margins, and all that, don't worry about it. I already showed you behavior options we don't need and filters we don't really need as well. So remember, the main thing I want you to take away from this is that there's static text, there's dynamic text, which can be changed by code at runtime, like we did here, and that uh, input text allows the user to change it themselves. It's basically like a you can submit information. So that is about it for the three types of text boxes. I will see you in a future tutorial.